Hello everybody, in this video we are going to be taking a look at how to set up Google Classroom on the iPad. First thing we need to do of course is open up the App Store and we need to download the app. So let's go up to the search bar here, let's type in Google Class. There it is at the top there, Google Classroom, I'll tap that. This is the icon here, looks like a chalkboard with a silhouette on it. Let's tap that. Now you can see by the cloud icon that this is something that I've downloaded in the past. Uh, all I need to do is tap that and it will download for me. That'll take some time, so let's fast forward a little bit. Okay, so it's done now. I can tap on open to open it, but as we've seen, Apple likes to put things on a new page on the iPad. I don't want it there. I want to drag it in with my other Google apps. So let me tap and hold and grab that and stick it in the Google folder. All right, so let's open it up. Here's the icon here, classroom. Let's tap on that. So this is where you need to sign in. Now it says sign in with your institution account. This is talking about Department of Education username at education.nsw.gov.au just like we did in the previous video with Google Drive. So we want to tap down here on add account. Now if you've already set up Google Drive it's quite likely that your account will appear in this list here just like mine has. If not you need to tap on add account go through that same process. I'm going to tap on my account I have already covered that. If you haven't seen that bit, then please click on the links below. You'll see a link to the previous video where I went through this process in the Google Drive video. So let me tap on that one. Here you can see down the bottom, there's a couple of slides here, a bit of an introduction. I can skip that. Okay, classroom I would like to send you notifications. I generally say no. And here's my class. Now I already have some classes set up, but let's look at this from scratch. Very, very similar to using Google Class on the computer. Up here we have a menu icon. We can tap that, it gives us a list of menu. These are the classes that we've got set up here. There's a calendar option. There's some settings options down here. This one here, classroom folders. This will take you to Google Drive to where the folders for each of these classes are set up. Uh, in terms of a student iPad, uh, one that's been shared between students in a class. Here, of course, again, we've got the option to manage accounts. We can add another account, delete an account. Uh, so for the moment, let's look at how to set up a new class. The plus icon up here in the top right hand corner, let's tap that. We've got two options, join a class or create a class. There is no differentiation to student or teacher. I can be a teacher of these classes, but still join another class as a student. We want to create a class, so let's tap create class. Give the class a name. Let's just call this test class. Uh, you can give it a section that might be uh, a grade level or a stage level. Tap create here in the top right. Google does its thing. You can see the progress bar there. And there we go. It takes us into the, the home page, I guess you could call it for that particular class. We've got three options, stream, students, and about. At the moment, stream is empty. We haven't posted anything. Any posts, assignments, announcements, anything that we post will appear on this screen here. The students tab. Here you'll have a list of students in the class. Now for new students to join your class, they go through the same process, open Google Class, tap on that plus icon in the top right hand corner, but they select join class. When they do that, a code will pop up or it will ask you for a code rather. And that's this code here. That's a unique code for each class. They put that in, that will give them access to this class. About, you can put in a little bit of information about the class there. Uh, you can co-teach as well. I haven't actually looked at how to set that up, but I know it can be done. But that's a very brief overview of what it looks like in terms of setting it up. Let's go look at another one. Let's have a look at this class here. There's, I know there's actually some content on the stream uh, and in the students. So here you can see someone's asked a question regarding uh, our end of unit assessment task. Here's the assessment task I've posted, the name of it, there's a bit of a description. There's an attachment that's been linked from my Google Drive. I'll show you how to do that in a moment. Students, I will obviously blur this out for privacy reasons, but you can see the students' names here. Their email addresses will show up if you tap on these uh, envelope, the email icons. And about, again, it shows you the teacher's name, my name. All right, let's go back into our class, our test class, which is currently empty, and let's make a new post. So we tap on this icon just here, the plus icon in the bottom right hand corner, and we have the option to make an assignment or to make an announcement. So let's create an assignment and it takes us to this. We need to give it a title. Let's call this, let's call this just test assignment. You can put a description in there if you want to. Here we've got June 19th of November. To change that due date, just tap on that. It will bring you up a calendar. You can swipe up or down to change the day, the month, 
and the year if you really want to get fancy. When you're ready, when you're satisfied with the date, click done. On the desktop, you can also select a time. Uh, this has been particularly useful for secondary teachers. In addition to that, one of the other features that makes Google Class really useful is this paperclip icon up here. This way I can attach something from my Google Drive or from a link uh, from a website, from a photo from my camera roll or a video from my camera roll, or I can use my camera to take a photo and post that. So I'm going to select something from my Google Drive. It will open up your Google Drive and in there you will have access to your folders and your files. Uh, let's just pick this file here, end of assessment rubric. It has now added that in. The other important thing to be aware of over here, this eye, this eye icon, tap on that. You get the option there to determine what level of access students will have. The best option, I, I believe, as a general rule of thumb, if it's something the students are going to be working with, set it so that it makes a copy for each student. If it's something that you only want students to look at, they don't need to do anything with it, it's just a case that they need to be able to see it, such as uh, instructions for a task outline for a unit of learning you would said to students can view the file students can edit the file that means that every student in your class will be able to edit that file uh, which means that unless you have a backup saved somewhere else you will lose the original version the delete option will just delete the attachment from this assignment. So let's go ahead and make a copy for each student. When you're done, when you're satisfied that this is right to go, tap the paper aeroplane icon here in the top right corner. There we go. And so it takes you back to the stream, tells the students when it's due, tells them there's a, an attachment, and it will give you as the teacher the ability to see how many students have completed and submitted and how many have not. You can also add comments here by tapping on that, uh, that class comments and you'll have the option there to put in comments about it. That's a very, very brief overview of how to use Google Class uh, on the iPad. Please remember you can pause and rewind, rewatch this as many times as you need to. Until the next video, we'll see you later.